Hello, everybody. Welcome back. So we have talked about the cell. We've talked about organelles. And today we are going to talk about how things move into and out of cells. So previously you have learned about um, cell membranes. <clears throat> and you can see um, up here in this picture that the cell membrane is made up of a bunch of different things, phospholipids, proteins, etc. And today we are going to learn how things move across that membrane. All right, this is not included in your notes, so you may just want to jot this down wherever there's room in a margin. But there are a few different types of cell transport that we are going to go over. There are two large groups. They are called passive transport and active transport. Passive transport is a transport um, that does not require energy. And active transport is a type of transport that does require energy. <clears throat> Passive transport includes diffusion, which involves small nonpolar things, facilitated diffusion, which involves polar or ionic things, and then osmosis, which involves the transport specifically of water. Active transport can involve pumping, and it can also involve endo and exocytosis. We are going to stick to passive transport today, just a short, uh, short introduction. <clears throat> okay, so we are, we're going to get into energy in another chapter, but basically we're going to start with the simplest thing, which is diffusion. And diffusion obeys the second law of thermodynamics. The second law of thermodynamics will govern biological systems. And for our purposes in this chapter, basically what it means is that the universe will tend towards disorder or entropy. Entropy is another word for disorder. So what does that mean? Well, it means that if we don't put any energy in, things get more disordered over time, right? And you can think about this in a number of examples. So think about um, if you don't repair your house at all or clean it over time, what's going to happen to your house? It's going to get messy and it's going to start falling apart because unless you put energy in, things are going to become more and more disordered. <clears throat> um, so... How that applies to cells and cell transport is the idea that things are going to spread out more over time if you let them, right? So here we have molecules of dye, and they are encased in a membrane. This membrane is semi-permeable. That means some things can pass through, some things cannot pass through. These molecules of dye look like they are small enough to pass through. So over time, what's going to happen? Well, all those molecules of dye, they have their own energy, right? Everything, every, every atom, every molecule has energy. And these molecules of dye are moving and bouncing around in every possible direction. They're going up, back, forth, down, left, right. And they're bouncing off one another and they're bouncing off the walls of the container. And therefore, some of them eventually are going to make their way on the other side of the membrane. Not all of them, but some of them can. All right. So these molecules on the other side of the membrane, they are more spread out because there are fewer molecules over there. And these guys are bouncing around in any sort of direction. They continue to bounce. They might even go back over to the other side of the membrane. And over time, what's going to happen is there's going to be enough back and forth of these molecules that we end up with what we call equilibrium where there's basically an equal amount of dye molecules on either side of the membrane. All right? This is the process of diffusion. Things moving from a high to a low concentration. They were crowded over here on that side of the membrane, and then eventually they moved to a lower concentration. This has increased disorder. The molecules were neatly organized on one side of the membrane. And then what happened? Well, entropy happened and these molecules ended up more disordered on both sides of the membrane as they reached equilibrium. So all things are gonna to move towards disorder. <clears throat> so simple diffusion, things move from high to low concentration. And we refer to that as down or sometimes with the concentration gradient. Down the concentration gradient and with the concentration gradient are the same thing, and that is passive transport. 
passive because no work has to be done. Energy is already naturally there. No energy input is needed. Another type of diffusion, which we will talk about more uh, in our next class, is osmosis. That is spe specifically the diffusion of water. All right. Now, some things cannot diffuse across the membrane. Right. So if you remember, nonpolar things can pass through the membrane, but everything is not nonpolar. Lots of things are, in fact, polar or ionic. Those things can't make it through the nonpolar interior of the membrane. And that's why we have proteins embedded in the membrane. Proteins help us with facilitated diffusion, which just means that the diffusion needs a protein like this is a channel. Channel and carrier proteins move specific molecules across the cell membrane. Just like I said, still no energy is needed. This is still diffusion. We don't have to force anything to happen. It will happen naturally. It may take some time to find the proteins and to diffuse through the proteins, but it will happen eventually. No energy Facilitated just means with help, the diffusion means passive. So we're still going from a high concentration to a low concentration. That's with the gradient or down the gradient. <clears throat> All right, in this picture, we have an open channel. So this, it means it is fast transport. It's just like a tunnel or a funnel. Things go in and they go right through. All right. <clears throat> So in terms of facilitated diffusion, some of them are channels. This channel is called an aquaporin. So this would be a pore or a channel for water. This is how water would get in and out of a cell through one of these helpful channels. Our cells are dotted with millions of aquaporins. And there are other channels as well for specific things. It could be sugar, which is polar. It could be ions like the sodium ion or the potassium ion or hydrogen ions. There are many types of channels. Here we have some ion channels. Um, ion channels can be picky. They can just allow certain things through. So notice that uh, the here the positive ions can go through this channel because the channel is set up to attract positive ions. And this other channel, channel B, is going to allow the negative ions through because that is what it is set up to attract. So these channels aren't just necessarily holes, but they can be picky with what they will allow through. Um, ions um, or other molecules as well, they can decide what can and cannot go through. <clears throat> Some channel proteins are gated. So this protein over here is closed, right? And then when we have a specific protein messenger, put itself in the correct position. So when that messenger is there, it is going to cause a, does anybody remember the name of a change in shape for a protein? We call that a conformational change. Term to remember, conformational change in the protein, which is gonna allow <coughs> ions to go through because now it is open. All right, and we are going to stop there for today. So we have gone over a simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion. Facilitated diffusion can be very simple with a channel, or it can involve other ways of getting things through, which we'll talk about later. All right, so that is the end of this um, presentation. Let me know if you have any questions.